So uh, Wolfie has asked, are there any characters that you'd like to bring back for future projects? Because they said in Bloody Rose, we got reunited with certain people. I won't, I won't spoil it. But mm -hmm. uh, are there any that you'd like to bring back? Not necessarily in book three, but I'm just you know, in future projects. Yeah. Um, well, definitely anyone who didn't, isn't dead will probably come back will probably come back in book three unless i just forget them <laughs> um because you know it's it's a, it's technically the last book of the series so you want to have everyone in there it does take place 16 years after the second book which takes place six years after the first so even the old guys that were old in the first book are now pretty much beyond i want to say beyond fighting age but and then I think back about that movie Braveheart and his father was like an old man or Murren's father, his buddy's father was an old man and mm -hmm. still fought. So um, yeah, there'll be lots of, lots of cameos. One character I kind of like jokingly talk about dragging out over and over again is Ganelon, who in Kings of the Wild is, you know, they, he's been turned to stone for the last 19 years and they, they thaw him out. Um, but um, he has kind of returned to that state at, at some point. And I kind of thought I had this joking idea about writing a, like a serial series called Ganelon in Space, where years from now these people <laughs> find this planet with the the you know the skeletal remains of all these fancy creatures and, and a statue. Yeah, they think it's like some art, so they take it on board. Uh, and then meanwhile, you know, maybe some of these monsters get loose and like cause havoc in the ship. And then you know they un they thaw out Ganelon and he's got an axe on a starship and has to just wreck shop. No one's quite equipped to deal with monsters the way he is. So that I, I might just torture poor Ganelon and let everyone he loves dies in the past and drag him on all intergalactic adventures. Didn't they do that with Friday the 13th? Like Jason in space for one of the yeah. films. And I, and I, awesome. I haven't seen, I think I saw advertised and thought, this is a joke. This, is, this isn't real, right? And apparently it was. Yeah, I mean, it's as good as any other Friday the 13th movie, I should say that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, you never know, you know, you want to diversify into sci-fi, maybe that's, you know, that's a way to do it. I mean, whether you're in a camp or, you know, on a starship, somebody with an axe is always a threat. Yeah, it's never good for anybody. No. no. <laughs> which brings us nicely on to book three, which you, you've mentioned. So. Is, yep. is the title, has the title been confirmed as Outlaw Empire? Is that Correct. right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so what can you tell us about it? Is it inspired by 90s hip hop? This was a rumor I heard. That's correct, yeah. Okay. 90s music in general. Okay, um, so not just hip hop, right, fair enough. Yeah, so kind of like the, the first one was, was, was 80s and a lot of, you know, or sorry, 70s and a lot of 70s music is, you know, was inspired by fantasy actually. So you get a lot of that kind of rambling and adventure kind of stuff and then, the 80s stuff was more about like ego and self-destructive, you know, just going nuts mm. uh, and hard on your sleeve kind of love and emotion. Um, and so 90s music, you know, it, it wavered between a lot of things, but a lot of it was very kind of anti-establishment and, you know, bucking back against society, whether it was grunge um, or whether it was hip hop uh, or whether it was Rage Against the Machine, which probably deserves their own space. Mm -hmm. They're one of those bands that when I was a, you know, a young, privileged high school kid, I thought, these guys are terrible. Why would you want to, you know, why would you be angry at the police? <laughs> and now, and now I, you know, I walk down the street ranting their songs. So, um, so yeah, I, there's, there's a lot of all that kind of music in there. And, and they're definitely like going into writing Kings of the Wild. I, I hadn't listened to, I had listened to a fair amount of like 70s rock but not as much as i obviously did and you get a huge love and you discover all these amazing songs and albums and facts and the same went for 80s and the same is going for 90s like my god i had no clue like uh the nas album called illmatic like to me now it is just you could play it at my funeral or it's like a lullaby to put me to sleep it has become this like it's like a part of me uh, and i just love it it's such an incredible glimpse into like his like a world that's not our own. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of, gonna be a lot of inspiration from 90s music. Excellent, a lot of Nirvana, I hope, and uh, as you said, Rage and- Yeah, Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam, oh, but Temple of, uh, is it Temple of the Dog, the super group with- um... Um, Yeah, I got a feeling they're- is it Temple of the Dog? Yeah. Yeah, something like that. They were like late 90s, almost early 2000s. Mm. But 
what are they from stone temple pilots i think was their was the band that they came from or maybe the lead singer or whatever but yeah there's a few bands like it always happens there's a few bands i just can't connect with yeah um, oh boy i just thought of something i don't even know if i should say it <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll go backwards to ease the thing but like when it comes to uh like 90s like i i do like them i do like them and some of their songs are incredible but pearl jam I have never been able to quite totally connect with when someone's like, this album is a perfect album. I'm just like, okay. Um, but I mean, obviously to each their own, people think the same thing about my albums. Um, and then what is there's another band in that, in that time. That's just like, everyone just loves them. And I'm just like the, whoever sings black hole sound garden, who sings black hole sun. Yeah, yeah. Like to me, black hole sun is awesome. And then every other song I just couldn't, it would never click in my head to ever want to hear it again. Um, and then for the eighties that kind of went for Metallica which obviously I appreciate them musically, but I could just never get my brain to differentiate from one song to the next for the most part. Yeah. And then with the old music, it was the Beatles. Um, okay. I I'm glad you said that. Okay. Yeah. I I'm going to say this. I was about to say something controversial. I yeah. appreciate the era that they came out. I appreciate the music. I understand the power and how important they were and how special and how, unique they were there was nothing like them in the world well, if you're the first and you come out everyone's just sits back and goes what the hell is this i've never seen like like you know i can't and i can appreciate it yeah i don't particularly like music. <laughs> yeah. like elvis presley I, that i get i get that I, I can sit back and listen to him all day amazing the beatles i go yeah it's right <laughs> yeah i mean god I'm i kind of alone with that though when I, when I say that yeah I tried and tried and tried and tried, but there's a few songs like, well, my guitar gently weeps. I love it. But besides that, you know, when I looked like what, what's the best album of all time and people say, I think it's the white album. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just like, no, we just lost every viewer. <laughs> yeah. Hi everyone. <laughs> yeah. If you think the white album is good, may I introduce you to meatloaf's battered of hell Two, um, which is superior in every single way. Oh, Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. We've lost some fans. <laughs> yeah. Bye, everyone. Thanks for watching. If you're still watching, I know that's my hot take. You know, it, it's just there's some bands I like you. I just I just can't get into. I just I just yeah. struggle. I can't connect to them for whatever reason. Whether it's I'm the wrong age group, but but I can go back and listen to some bands from the 70s and listen to them the first time and go, this is amazing. Exactly. This is like unbelievable, you know? Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's, yeah, music is so subjective that, you know, if someone doesn't like somebody that I like, I'm never going to put them down. Yeah. Like I didn't get into Fleetwood Mac until my late 20s. I, mm -hmm. I, I was vaguely aware of them. I'd hear songs on the radio and go, oh, yeah, that's pretty good. And then at some point someone went, Here's this album, go home and listen to it. I listened yeah. to Rumours and went, that's one of the best things I've ever heard from start to finish. Oh, yeah. I'm in, I'm in, that's it, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, and I listened to a lot of Rumours, right, in Kings of the Wild. They went on repeat over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And the same goes for Rush, like Ready Player One was the song. It was a, one of the trials in Ready Player One. He has to play the yes. opening notes of a Rush song. And I was like, oh, I'm going to go play this song. And it turns out that song is a 17-minute space opera you know about an intergalactic <laughs> evil priest trying to stamp out all music and it's like it's incredible um so yeah sometimes it takes a while to get into music obviously it took me a long time in my life to get into all these genres so fair enough so uh back on book three do you know anything about the release date is there any kind of uh do you have an update no not really like i said i've been right i've written written so many openings to it and um I do have one that I'm fixed on now and I love it. So okay. hopefully I'll get motoring on it. But yeah, my unfortunate editors have been very patient with me because yeah. And then just, I don't know, dark times, dark times these days. So I think they've kind of affected a lot of people and some people more than others, but I've definitely struggled to be creative in the last year or so. So uh, hopefully we'll, those of us who were affected by it uh, have seen a bit of light at the end of the tunnel. So uh, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully we'll, yeah, things will pick up soon. Okay. But boy, once it's, once I'm just like even on a roll of it, I think, like if I told my editor I was halfway done, they'd be like, this book is pretty much done. 
I just need to get past it, over that opening hump for me. Um, and yeah, I'm very eager to share the cover with people because I've no, seen the cover like well over a year ago. It's ah. not phenomenal, but I, they won't they won't let me share it. Uh, no, no, I, I, I saw on, that's, as, that's worthy of it. Yeah, I sat on my new cover for like three or four months before I could show anybody. So yeah, um, it's always good when you. You, want, you just want to share it with people, but you're sat there, you're like, I can't say anything. It's so frustrating. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, as soon as, uh, as soon as I'm on a roll with it, I will crow, crow from the rooftop because I'll be so damn happy about it. So. Mm. So here's a good question from Holly. She said, uh, she knows you're, you're, you're passionate about video games. She'd love to hear your thoughts on the rise of uh, gaming inspired um, writing, whether it's crossovers or uh, is it lit RPG? books and that kind of stuff would you do you know about that kind of thing yeah a little bit i've read uh one of the more famous or like i guess i think i think famous of books in that series uh sufficiently advanced magic i believe it's called mm -hmm. uh, andrew rowe and it was great uh that's the kind of thing that really really appeals to me i don't know if i'd ever write it um but i really love that genre only because i play a lot of video games and i think that's it's just a fun way to do it's a funny way to do things and i've seen like i've watched some anime that's got similar themes in it um that's like video games you know people whether they're trapped in them or playing in them or something like that um but yeah no i mean video games themselves are have done a lot in the last few years to catch up to you know writing wise they're hiring real writers and uh or just you know people in them i've written some incredible games uh and so yeah, the line the lines getting blurrier and blurrier, and writing for a video game is definitely something I'd I've done a little bit of it uh, last year, and then I would definitely love to do more of it in the future though, because video games, as Holly said, is a huge, huge, huge passion of mine. So, what are you playing at the moment? Uh, these days, I'm I've just been playing. You know, have you ever heard of Total War, the Total War series? Vaguely, vaguely heard of it. Or the first time I ever played Total War, I finished the battle and I was like this is what I was born to do <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a huge history buff and the first one I played was uh, it was a demo of Rome Total War where you were playing Carthage ambushing the Romans and that's like my favorite historical event of all time the Punic War so uh, they're, they're kind of games are kind of like civilization like top-down city yeah. by city strategy and building but then when you go into the battles you've got you know, thousands, literally thousands of troops and units, and you're moving them around. And if, you know, if you're shooting someone on their side of their shield, it does less damage. If it's windy the, or rainy, the arrows don't do as much damage. And like, and it sounds very technical, but it's, it, they've made it into like a very kind of like friendly and easy way. So I've been playing uh, the Warhammer version of that, which is like just a fantasy battles. And it's just nice. it's so extremely well done. Mm. Um, and I'm kind of just, I don't want to get into anything because Cyberpunk 27.7 is, 10 days away as we record this and i don't i mean i think everyone who plays video games will be playing that all at once <laughs> so yeah everyone's ordering all of the playstation fives and uh <laughs> yeah they're like you know golden ticket at the moment getting hold of one yeah so i mean really that's when you can play on any of the systems so i'm i'll be playing on my ps4 but uh but yeah i can't wait i love cyberpunk the idea like I, it's a terrible title don't get me started but i love the idea like that genre mm. um and so i just can't wait to jump into that world mm. it could have no story whatsoever just allow me to drive around a cyberpunk city at night and I... <laughs> that's it you just do that all day <laughs> a little like synth wave music i'm good yeah, yeah fair enough yeah. are there any um like game franchise you'd love to write a novel in whether it's a tie-in novel or something you know original is it something you think oh, i'd love to explore that world and do a novel and just go off and do stuff um not so much video games i don't think i mean god i write way too slow and it requires way too much i for me like personal investment i don't think i could write necessarily in like someone else's franchise per se mm. but that said um the the role-playing setting uh dark sun right which is a dragon setting um they recently re-released it whatever that dungeon dragons was i think it was fourth edition that was just like doomed 
Um, but I bought all the books because Dark Sun is like my bread and butter. Dark Sun to me was the coolest setting ever invented. It took place in a world, a fantasy world that had been devastated by magic. Um, and it, it was all like desert and it invented so many cool things in it. The elves were like nom nomads um, that rode from city to city and like stole stuff. The halflings were cannibals. Um, wow. There's gladiatorial arenas in every single city. Um, one of my ideas like that I use in the book are these things called Argosies, which are kind of like my tour buses. Um, they had these things in Darkson that were Argosies that were just like massive like fortresses on wheels pulled by these huge um, like turtle tortoise type things mm. across the desert. Um, and there was like sorcerers in them called defilers that whenever they would use magic, it would like all the plants would turn to ash around them and stuff like that. Wow. The whole, the, the ocean was made of silt uh, and it required like psionics to psionics like the, as a term um, in Dungeons and Dragons was invented for Dark Sun. Mm. So it was the setting to kind of incorporate them. So they would, at least as far as I know, uh, you know, it would require psionics to, to float uh, the ships on the silt. It was just everything about it was so cool. It was great. So I would love to write like a Dark Sun book, but they don't make them anymore. Uh, sadly. Do you ever dust off the old books? The old get out the old D20. From time to time, yeah. I, it's been a while since I had a regular group, um, mm. like a long while. Um, but uh, occasionally, every Christmas, and I'm not going this year, but uh, a couple of my old friends go up to this remote cabin in uh, Quebec uh, that is just blanketed in snow. <laughs> and we eat terrible food and play uh, D and D for about three or four days. So that sounds that sounds pretty good. Yeah, yeah I'm missing it this year, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. February, I do it with a, a bunch of guys as well. Eight of us get together in a converted barn. It's a lovely place. We yeah. like a few days, stack of board games, beer, lots of bad food, and and good food, and. Uh, all we do is play board games, yeah. watch DVD and drink beer for three or four days in a row. Oh, that's pretty great. Have you ever played D&D &D or do you play it? Oh, yeah, yeah. I played it. I played it a long time. 20, but I, I, like you, I haven't had a regular game in yeah. over 10 years. I just, things have changed and I've not had a chance to, to play. My friend built his own system and we used to play that. Yeah. Um, oh, I've got my, my bag of dice somewhere tucked away, you know, gathering dust at the moment, but... Yeah. Kind of equally playing you know playing till the sun comes up at six o'clock and you just you've forgotten what time it is because you're just so busy involved yeah were you the dm or just a, or the player player a player i once ran a game for a friend built uh around um the world of one of my books actually an early one it's not yeah it went okay but i was always like i just want to get in there and do stuff i don't want to be the gm <laughs> yeah do you know have you ever been a gm uh always only once have I ever been the player. Oh, really? Uh, Interesting. But, uh, when I got into it, it was I, I was young and I had a couple of friends that played with me and my brother, and so I was just the person that that started. And then it just that's always kind of what I've done. And ah, like torturing played. your friends over several days. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I wasn't I wasn't too harsh. I usually I like to. I mean, and I always paired music with it. Although nowadays, last time we went up to this cabin, we played a Kings of the Wild inspired one, which is easy to do because it's just like well, guess what? You guys are in a band. Um, um, although they weren't in a band, they were the people that go get the monsters so the band could come back and fight it. Um, um, but yeah, so it worked. It's really, really well. And I had each character pick a, like a 70s or 80s theme song for their character that uh, I would have on hand. So if whenever they attempted something epic, I would play their, you know, Jesse's girl would come on or something like that <laughs> or, son or something, you know, it was pretty fun. The closest I've had to that in the last few years was um, there were eight of us playing the Battlestar Galactica board game. Yeah. And we had, it's, it's amazing. If you haven't played it, it's so good. Yeah. And we had a Bluetooth speaker on in the back with all of the Bear McCreary soundtracks. And it got to one point where we all had to make a decision and we all stood around the table. We all stood up. <laughs> and then it was like, so say we all, so say we all. And the music's blaring, it gets to a critical moment. It, oh, you couldn't have timed it better. And we've been playing yeah. like eight hours. That's as close as I've got to role playing in a decade. But. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I've heard great things about that game. It's a bit complicated, but once you understand it and you, you get into it, yeah. the mechanics are really good. And there's like a, a traitor mechanic with 
uh, Cylons and you know if you're you find out if you're a skin job or not halfway through and it, it's really cool it's really really good but yeah that could definitely recommend it and they're not even a sponsor they could be <laughs> so I guess you say you're, you're still working on book three but are you jotting down ideas for for what's next do you, do you have a plan or are you going to think about it later um, yeah, I've got a couple, a couple of different ideas floating around. One's definitely more prevalent than others, and it's kind of the one most likely that could be a series of books. Mm. Um, whereas most ideas I have, to me at least, I don't know, maybe it's just how my brain works, but work better as standalones. Yeah. Which, granted, we are kind of in a day and age now where the standalone, I think, is being a bit more widely accepted mm. uh, than it used to be. Um, so, yeah, maybe it depends which which one you know, either comes to the forefront in my mind or which one my agents and publishers think would be best. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty confident when it comes to other people's uh, opinions. So, um, but yeah, there's one I definitely have in mind uh, that, I, that I would like to explore and it's kind of more like a series kind of stuff. Mm, yeah. In fact, I used the person's name, um, which is my cat's name, Croft, uh, I used it in book three and I actually took it out because I want to use it as the main character's last name. And if I did something else, so. Fair enough. Yeah. 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 Save, save it for later. Exactly. <laughs> cool. Well, uh, thanks for coming on. Thanks for, for talking to, to me about. Uh, My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Everything. Uh, for those who haven't yet, go out and check out uh, Kings of the Wild and the Bloody Rose. And I'll put all your links to social and stuff for people to get in touch with you and uh, follow you on there but uh pretty late at night here yeah really late here yeah i'm gonna go and go to, go oh, to bed, go to bed. <laughs> absolutely yeah so stay safe take care of yourself and uh, i'll talk to you soon thanks for watching everyone bye everyone